Good morning and welcome to Breakfast Church. It's uh, Mothering Sunday, which means it's Sunday the 18th of March, which means we're getting another week closer uh, both to Easter and another week that we've knocked off Lent. But today, Mothering Sunday, that great celebration. So if you've uh, uh, already done the cards and the presents in your house and now sitting down to watch this, thank you if you're watching this slightly later because... You're having a different kind of a, a start to Mothering Sunday. Well, it is called Breakfast Church, so it's okay if mum is enjoying her breakfast in bed whilst watching and joining in with Breakfast Church. That's absolutely fine. Um, I know some people said that uh, last week they had struggled to try and find the link, and we don't quite know what happened, but this is also available on YouTube. So if you go to youtube.com and just put into the search bar Wixom's Church, you'll find us there as well just to remind you that there's two ways that we we put out our sunday uh, celebrations what are we thinking about this morning are we doing mothering sunday as our theme this morning Beck? well in just a moment we've got a video about mothering sunday uh, and we know that it's a, a great day to celebrate but it can also be a hard day uh, for lots of different reasons so we're just going to have a little moment to think about that this morning but that's not the main thing that we're looking at today we've got our guest speaker danny who's come to talk to us all about what the Acts, the Book of Acts and the Acts Church had to say about conflict, which, depending on how well you've done this morning, may be appropriate. I think I, I've done very, very well because I know that the order is in, the Sunday lunch is coming and I know you love a good Sunday lunch. Yeah, I, I hope that there's also a card at least. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. This has been pre-recorded on Friday morning. It does feel a bit different, doesn't it, not having the... The children here this week. Yep, they're back at school, but they will be joining us on Sunday morning when we're uh, sharing in this time together. And they will be featuring a little bit later on it's, in the video. It's, uh, as I say, just uh, different kind of putting it all together and having to record the bits on Friday afternoon when the children come home. Back to as it was just before Christmas. But it's been nice and quiet and peaceful this week in our house. Yeah. Very much so. When do you go back to London? Thank you, Beth. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. That's... So much love. As I said, is, it, is this demonstrating conflict that we're going to be thinking about this morning? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, should we crack on? We should. Before we just play our uh, video for Mothering Sunday that reminds us that we're to give thanks for our mums. Becky, would you just give thanks that we're together this morning as, as a church to spend this time together with our families? Wider because we can interact with each other on the chat, but also we get to spend time with God. Becky, lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are your family and uh, we thank you that you're with each of us in our homes across the area. We pray that we will remember that we are part of that family together in you. Help us today to hear from you and to celebrate all that you are and all that you've done uh, for us. Amen. Amen. So without further ado, here's this video to remind us that Mother's Day is a day, or Mothering Sunday is a day, to be thankful. For lots of us, Mother's Day is a really happy day. A day to celebrate our mums and say a big thank you for all they do. For their love, hard work, wisdom and comfort. For walking with us through the highs and the lows. For being there through the tears and big steps, and struggles, and sorrows, and joys, and laughter. But for some of us, Mother's Day is a hard day, a sad day. Some of us had mums who didn't look after us well. Some of us are remembering mums who are no longer here, and children we have lost. Some of us would love to be mums, but can't. Our relationships might be complicated, strained or broken. But we can still be thankful for the many women in our lives who have nurtured, cared for and loved us. Women who have been mothers to us in lots of different ways. Who spend time with their nephews and nieces. Who hang out with teenagers at the youth group who pray for us each week and encourage us to keep going, who teach us about the best parent God 
who adopts us into his family forever. So whether you're a birth mum, a foster carer, an adoptive mum, or longing to be a mum, thank you to all the mothers in our lives, whatever they look like, for all you do and say and are, seen and unseen. Thank you. What a powerful uh, video uh, there, reminding us of giving thanks for those women in our life who've shaped us. And so we're going to turn now in a time of prayer. And I'm going to use this morning a prayer that Pete Gregg, now Pete runs 24-7 prayer. And Pete has just a, a knack of being able to help us pray real and honestly before God. And he put this on his social media uh, a couple of years ago, and it's really poignant. So friends, wherever we are, let's just gather ourselves as we pray. Lord, help us to pray for the women and mothers today. For the perfect ones and flawed ones. For the present ones and the absent ones. For those we hold and those we have lost. For those we love and have loved us. For adoptive mums, for foster mums, for step mums, for second mums. A mums who don't want to replace another, but just want to be the most they can be. For those we didn't love, for those that didn't love us. For those we felt were taken too soon. For those we are losing day by day. We pray for women who long to hold a child and never have. For women who have lost a child before they've even met them. And hold on to the hope of one day being reunited in heaven. For mums who have lost against their children and would give everything they have to hold them again. For women who have failed as mothers and live with that regret. For women who wish they could start again. For women who don't know how to get in touch with their children. We pray for mums who are bringing up children on their own. We pray for those who want to see their children more. We pray for women who've forgotten what it is to be a mum and need reminding. We pray for those who have abandoned their children and for the children that they've abandoned. We pray for lost mums, distant mums, absent mums, for those away with work, for those away from home. We pray for those who miss our mums. We pray for those who wish they could say one last thing to them. We pray for those who have had to say goodbye to their mums today. We pray for those who've lost contact with their mums. We pray for those whose mums hurt them. We pray for those who can't forgive their mums. We pray for those who've hurt their mums. We pray for those who do not know who their mum is or was. We pray for those who've lost wives, mums, daughters. We pray for men today who miss the women in their life. We pray for one another, men and women all over the world. Each of us is someone's son and daughter. Someone was our mother. Remind us of a creator who is a father that will never leave us and hold us close to his chest like a mother nursing her child. The one who knows us intimately is strong enough 
to be able to help us and be kind enough to care. Show us what parenting looks like in you, Lord God, because you parent us always and you never stop. Amen. We're now going to have our first song together this morning. like pink and some like blue Some of us like reading books Some of us like feeding ducks That's because we're different, me and you But God loves And Kezia have joined me now and we're going to lead you in a little game today instead of our normal discussion questions but this might get you talking 
So we're going to play a game called Would You Rather? And I'm going to give you two, two choices. And you're going to vote by either shuffling along that side or shuffling along that side. Okay, so at home you can join in and you can shuffle along or you can run from one end of the room to the other. Or you might just want to talk about the options. Are you ready? So, if you could only eat one of the following every meal for the rest of your life, would you rather eat pizza or ice cream? Ice cream. So you're going that way, you're going that way. We're divided. Are you changed your mind? Division. Back to pizza. Ice cream. Because <laughs> you can't make your mind up. Pizza. pizza. Okay, pizza here. Next question. Would you rather have a pet cat or a pet dog? Dog. <laughs> well, considering we've got a cat, that's a bit worrying. <laughs> Would you rather go on holiday to the North Pole or to the equator? Or North, North Pole. There, you, there is no hole and you can have snowball fights. Okay. Hope you're uh, joining in at home. We've got another one for you. Would you rather run away and join the circus <laughs> or become a fresh, professional footballer? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Isaac's going to become a footballer. Kezia's going to become a... Football. Circus. Join the circus. Right, one last one. Are you ready? Like the picture. Okay, one last one. Would you rather have to walk on your hands every day for the rest of your life or crawl around on your knees? Crawl around on your knees. <coughs> it's really hard to crawl around on your knees because um, um, when you because when you like want to go, crawl on your knees fast and you're on the pavement, it's like ow, 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 ow. It would ow, be, ow, yeah, ow, but ow, I'm not ow, sure that walking on your hands would be much easier. It is. You'd have to invent hand shoes. Anyway, <laughs> this is our game this morning. Would you rather? Hand and some off. things Isaac and Kezia agreed on and some things they didn't agree on. And that will take us into our theme a bit later on this morning. I'm going to share our reading for this morning now. And it comes again from the book of Acts, carry on on this theme that we have. So the reading today comes from Acts chapter 15. And I'm reading today from the International Children's Bible. Then some men came to Antioch from Judea. They began teaching the non-Jewish brothers. You cannot be saved if you're not circumcised. Moses taught us to do this. Paul and Barnabas were against this teaching and argued with the men about it. So the group decided to send Paul, Barnabas and some other men to Jerusalem. There they could talk more about this with the apostles and elders. The church helped the men leave on the trip. They went through the countries of Phoenicia and Samaria, telling all, telling all about how the non-Jewish people had turned to God. This made all the believers very happy. When they arrived in Jerusalem, the apostles, the elders and the church welcomed them. Paul, Barnabas and the others told about the things that God had done with them. But some of the believers who had belonged to the Pharisee group came forward. They said the non-Jewish believers must be circumcised. We must tell them to obey the law of Moses. The apostles and elders gathered to study the problem. This was a long debate. Then Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, you know what happened in the early days. God chose me from among you to preach the good news to the non-Jewish people. They heard the good news from me and they believed. God, who knows the thoughts of all men, accepted them. He showed this to us by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. To God, these people are not different from us. When they believed, he made their hearts pure. So now, why are you testing God? You're putting a heavy load around the necks of the non-Jewish brothers. It's a load that neither we nor our fathers were able to carry. But we believe that they too will be saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus. Then the whole group became quiet. They listened to Paul and Barnabas speak. Paul and Barnabas told about all the miracles and signs that God did through them among the non-Jewish people. After they finished speaking, James spoke. He said, brothers, listen to me. Simon has told us how God showed his love for the non-Jewish people. For the first time, he has accepted them and made him his people. The words of these prophets agree with this too. After these things, I will return. The kingdom of David is like a fallen tent, but I will rebuild it. And I will rebuild it 
again, and I will again build its ruins and I will set it up. Then those people who are left alive may ask the Lord for help and all people from other nations may worship me, says the Lord. And he will make it happen. And these things have been known for a long time. So I think we shouldn't bother the non-Jewish brothers who've turned to God. Instead, we should write a letter to them. We should tell them these things. Do not eat food that has been offered to idols. This makes the food unclean. Do not take part in any kind of sexual sin. Do not taste blood. Do not eat animals that have been strangled. They should not do these things because there are still men in every city who teach the law of Moses. For a long time, the words of Moses have been read in the synagogue every Sabbath day.
Hi, uh, I'm Danny, and I've been asked to talk to you today about conflict. You know, some people will avoid it at all costs, and yet others seem to utterly relish in it. But our, our diversity and, and our uniqueness is a brilliant and a wonderful thing. But it also means that wherever there's people, there's always going to be differing opinions. There'll probably be a bit of pride. And there will invariably at some point be conflict, whether that's in our families, in our workplaces, on social media platforms. And sadly, in our church communities, because none of us are immune. But I think that we can take some comfort in knowing that some of the earliest church communities experience conflict. This, you know, this isn't a new problem. Life can be really messy. People can be messy. And uh, community can certainly get messy too. I suspect that some people think that as Christians, we should avoid things like conflict. But in my experience, avoidance doesn't help to solve anything. You know, we're, we're all broken people and we're living in a, in a broken world. And so, unfortunately, we have to accept that it just isn't possible to live a life without facing conflict at times. But you know what? That doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. The heart of God, the Father heart, is always restoration and reconciliation. If, if we can approach conflict as an opportunity to see old wounds and, and fractured relationships healed, then dealt with in the right way, a well-handled conflict, tricky and painful as it might be, could actually be really fruitful. Not just because there's an opportunity to learn about ourselves, but because there's a very real chance to make things a bit better. Now, I'm sure that many of us can think of conflicts that perhaps have not been handled all that well. Maybe we've not spoken out when we should have because we've been afraid of upsetting someone. Or, or perhaps we've been the one that hasn't really listened. Or maybe we've even been really short with someone. It's sad, but it's really easy to picture a bad experience of conflict. But what does a well-handled conflict look like? Well, I think that Paul and Barnabas are a great example in this passage of what it might mean to handle conflict well. It's so easy for us to base our actions and therefore, you know, our words on our opinions and on our feelings. What do I want to get out of this situation? But when faced with this quite major disagreement, Paul and Barnabas didn't simply say, oh, let's vote and just encourage everyone to focus on their own opinion. Instead, they focused on what God might be saying. They visited the churches and they talked and they listened to see if they could work out together what God's will might be in all of this. I wonder if perhaps we could learn from that. There were clearly two opposing ideas, but it's not about winning or losing when approached in that way. There can never, there can never be winners, only ever really losers. A well-handled conflict is is about communication. It's about a teachable spirit and learning to listen for God's heart together in spite of differences of opinion or in spite of how we might feel. God isn't just present at work in the resolution of the conflict. Do you know, God is at work through the conflict 
resolving some of the issues in us. Maybe next time you find yourself in a conflict situation, you might stop, take a step back, set aside your own aims and, and ask for a moment, what is truly God's will in all of this? And you know, you might be surprised. Thank you so much to my friend Danny from uh, Centenary uh, Baptist Church in March for bringing us our message this morning. We've got uh, next week, including our series, or I'd like to do more on the Book of Acts. I think we should be doing more, but uh, it, we're going to just pause our series, I think, as we go into uh, Palm Sunday and Easter Day and the weeks that follow. But uh, it's been great. But concluding our final uh, time on the book of Acts, at least in this series. Next Sunday, we have Pastor Sarika Hugali, who is the national leader of Foursquare Church based in Luton. You may say you've never heard of Foursquare. Well, Pastor Sarika has got a great message next week as we think about suffering. Um, and it'd be good to hear what uh, Pastor Sarika says uh, next week. But my thanks once again to Danny, and I look forward to being with Danny. Uh, in a couple of weeks when I go to, to her fellowship and, re and repay the favour. We're going to end our time this morning not with a song, but with a reflection. And this week, as children have gone back, we've had an opportunity to ask questions about how we're feeling. For some of us, we've done that with God. And so... This week, our friend Phil Knox, who joined us last Sunday through his work at the Evangelical Alliance, produced this, a lament, an opportunity to cry out for God. And I think it just hits the note quite right for us this uh, Sunday morning, as we think. So we're going to play uh, Phil's uh, spoken word lament. I hope it blesses you, I hope it challenges you, I hope it encourages you. That's where we're going to end our time together this morning, but to, because that's how our service ends, I'm just going to lead us in one last prayer, asking God's blessing upon us for the week ahead. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time uh, together this morning. Thank you for uh, the message that Danny brought. Thank you for the, the fun that we've had. Lord, bless us as we go into this week. May the love of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. May the joy of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his, his service. May the peace of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And may God's blessing, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon each and every one of us this day, this week, as we go out in his name. Amen. So over to Phil. We look forward to seeing you again this time next Sunday nine o'clock when we do it all over again but for now it's over to phil knox from the evangelical alliance with this powerful lament <laughs> when rumors of a virus turn to evening government updates when headlines move to daily news of fresh infection growth rates. When schools are closed and holidays postponed, everyone's asking, who's been furloughed? A slight change of plans, just wash your hands, it's like the flu, remember? Let's stay at home, do pee with Joe, it'll be over by September. How long, oh Lord? When streets resemble ghost towns at peak lockdown regulation. When we crave a crowd, cry out for connection from full-blown isolation. When millions search for online church with newfound innovation. Everything's online, but getting loo roll is a hassle. And trust in powers eroded by trips to Barnard Castle. It all ends in tears. There's no quick fix when you're a table of seven, but there's a rule of six. How long, oh Lord? When our dreams are dashed, ambitions strangled, Christmas plans destroyed and a righteous anger rises at the murder of George Floyd. And when families are asked to grieve behind masks at graves of precious loved ones past, life is in limbo, we're stuck in between, 
Herd immunity or miracle vaccine, 2020 shortchanged by COVID-19, and children can't get the food that they need. How long, oh Lord? With ever growing numbers of the daily deaths presented, when this is the new normal, when what life was like lamented, and will people stop using the word unprecedented? We are zoomed out, homeschooled out, restrictions extended, and those we love die unattended. How long, oh Lord? I've been deprived of peace. I've forgotten what prosperity is. So I say my splendor is gone and all that I'd hoped for from the Lord and my soul is downcast within me. And yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness.